Scales and chords are commonly seen as different things. It's an easy assumption to make because we play them differently. Chords are polyphonic, more than one note ringing out at a time. Scales are monophonic, one note at a time. And so it's easy to make that assumption. The degree that they're actually related is much, much closer than that assumption suggests. When we expose how close and sort of intertwined these two things are, it helps to not only decipher the neck, but also makes it very, very easy to apply new information and new harmonic structures to the guitar. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today you will learn a technique that I call nesting, basically combining chords and scales together in one exercise. Chords come from scales, right? And the architecture of a scale defines what chords can be built. So you can see that technically they look very different, but theoretically they're actually part of the same fabric. Let, let me show you how this works. Let's get to nesting. What is nesting? We're going to reveal the relationship between scales and chords by sort of projecting them on top of each other in a very, very focused way. So we see the, the very, very heart of this relationship. And the way we're going to do that is using two things, the major scale and major triads. We're going to be utilizing these in the key of A. And we're going to be largely around this fifth position here. The first two pieces of information we need are the architecture of the major scale, which is right here, and the architecture of a major triad. So let's review those. This major scale, the architecture is as follows. Between the root and the two is a whole step. Between the two and the three is a whole step. Between the three and the four is a half step. Between the four and the five is a whole step. Between the five and the six is a whole step. Between the six and the seven is a whole step. And between the seven and the root is a half step. If you're a fan of this channel, you know that I like to boil things down to the smallest possible piece of information that I need to bring along to get a task completed. This looks like a big cognitive load for me. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, right? It's just like blah. Here's how I see this. This is a bunch of whole steps with two half steps in very specific places. There's a half step between the three and the four, and there's a half step over here between the seven and the root. This whole architecture, I'm just going to think of three, four, seven root. Those are my half steps. Half step between the third and the fourth, half step between the seven and the root. That way I boil it down, sort of reduce my cognitive load. This triad is pretty easy. The root, in other words, the first note of the scale, the third note of the scale, and the fifth note of the scale. Pretty easy to, to um, bring along with us. So those are the architectural sort of details that we need to get this task done. The way the nesting works is we're going to separate this into sets of three strings to project our triads on. And if you don't know about triads, there's a video right here that exposes all that stuff. These are A major triads in the fifth position, and there are th sets of three strings. I'll go through these right now and show you what they are. If you think about your A bar chord, you can see these triads in most of the string sets except for this last one. Here are the fret numbers and the string sets exposed. This first triad is on the G, B, and E string, and it's 6, 5, 5. The next set of strings is D, G, and B, and that's 7, 6, 5. The next set of strings is A, D, and G, and that's seven, seven, six. The last set of strings is the E, A, and D strings, and that's nine, seven, seven. So we've got our major triads. Now let's put the scale down. This is gonna be a little bit of an unusual shape for the scale. Um, Let me give you those fret numbers. On the E string, it's five, seven, nine. A string is five, seven, nine. And then on the D string, it's six, seven. On the G string, it's four, six, seven. On the B string, it's five, seven. And then finally on the E string, it's four, five. It's sort of an unusual shape, but we need this note out here because of these triads because the triads basically go from the 5th fret down to the ninth fret. 
So those are the two pieces of information we're going to need. Here's the constraint and how we're going to do the exercise. We're going to play the chord. I'm going to start with this top string here, this top string set. We're going to play the chord, play the scale in this order, root, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root, and then play the chord again. And we're only going to be using that set of strings. So what this is going to do, you'll see very quickly, is it's going to make us switch strings pretty vigorously. This first triad is three, five, root. This is an inversion of the major triad. If we're going to start the scale on the root, three, five, root, it's going to start up here. I'm going to play it for you and then explain it. So I'm playing the triad, and then I'm going root, two, three, four, there's our half step, five, six, seven, whole, uh, half step below the root, see how that works? Now notice that the only cognitive load we really have is knowing where the third and the fifth are, the root third fifth in this shape, and then knowing where those half steps are. Everything else seems to be taken care of, right? Root, two, three, half step up to the four, five, full step to the six, seven is half step below the root. All right, let's get to the next one. This is all gonna start sinking in pretty nicely. This next one is on the D, G, and B string, and this is root, three, five. Major, this is just our root position major triad. Starting the scale on the root, it will go like this. Root, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root. Next string set, A, D, and G. This voicing is 5 root 3. So starting the scale on the root, root 2, root 2, 3, 4, there's our half step. 5, this is the note in the triad. Half step below the root is the 7, back to the root. Root 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, root. Let's do the last one. This is the E, A, and D string version of the triad, and this is three, five root. Three, five root. So the root's on the top here. Root, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root. Okay, there they are, chords and scales nested together, right? Using that constraint to build the scale around the chord, right? Seeing them as one thing. Reducing that cognitive load of the, of the major scale architecture to just the half steps. And then seeing that the root, the third, and the fifth are already there for you, it sort of fills in all the gaps, right? All you have to do really is fill in the second degree and that sixth degree, the seventh, right? two, four, seven. It's all you really have to add to the root three, five to get the entire scale. Anyway, I hope this helps expose how these things are interrelated and how they depend on each other to actually really exist at all. I've tabbed all these examples out and not just this position that I covered uh, today, but also the, these other positions on the neck. Those are all the A triads on the neck. Um, I've tabbed all of those combinations out. So it's, it's much more than I've just covered here in the lesson today. Um, if you'd like those, go over to Patreon. I've got that uh, link in the description below, um, and all the tabs are over there. Any uh, support over there is greatly appreciated. This is a tool. It's not a solution. This is designed to give you a tool to use as a, as a sort of sonic archaeologist. Uh, I've shown you nesting for one scale, the major scale, with one triad, the major triad. 
in one key, you can now start to see, hopefully, that this tool can allow you to look at this sort of architecture and uncover these relationships in any key, for any chord, with any scale. I mean, this is a powerful tool. So don't let it just stop at the example I've given you today. Learn how to use this tool and go out and, and see what other relationships you can uncover yourself. Okay, I hope you enjoy this. Um, good luck with it. It really, um, it really helps to uh, decipher how interrelated these two things are. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good time and I'll see you next time.